Greetings, dear chess fans and experts. This is Feet Master Max Omariv with you, and today we'll talk about the great Emperor Napoleon Bonaparte and specifically about his attitude to chess. First, I'd like to say that chess in general is considered as a game of kings. It's not by chance that many great emperors and rulers played chess. For example, Henry I, Henry II, Richard the Lionheart, Catherine the Great, Ivan the Terrible. By the way, there's a legend that Ivan the Terrible died while playing chess. Maybe he got too nervous. I don't know. But of course, these are all legends. Nevertheless, many rulers, even those great ones who have gone down in history, liked to play chess. And one of the most famous people in this respect is Napoleon Bonaparte. Today we're going to talk a little bit about his involvement in chess and analyze several games. Ever since his youth, Bonaparte began to show a love for chess, even before he became emperor. He regularly visited the Café de la Régence in Paris and had his own favorite table. Napoleon played chess rather mediocrely, usually losing and getting wildly mad about it, which of course affected his future, too. Not many games have made it to our time, but we're going to look at some of them that have. By the way, Napoleon liked checkers more than chess. He often used to have with him a checkerboard rather than a chessboard, but nevertheless, chess played a big role in his life, and we'll talk about that at the end, too. We'll start with the game against the Turk, also known as the Mechanical Turk. That was the first chess playing machine, but actually, of course, it was a fake. In fact, it was the first David Copperfield, David Blaine, Harry Houdini in one person. This man invented a chess machine which he claimed was artificial intelligence. But in fact, there was a little dwarf chess player hiding inside the fake automaton and operating it from inside it. The Turk became famous worldwide. All eminent persons of the time played with it, including Catherine the Great. And so Napoleon also couldn't resist and decided to play a game with the machine. So friends, let's see how it was. Napoleon plays white. He starts with movie 4. By the way, the surname of the dwarf chess player who was hidden in the automaton was Algair. Queen f3. Napoleon apparently thought that this is really some terminator who did not know anything and decided to deliver scholar's mate. Knight c6, bishop c4. He just wants to deliver scholar's mate. Well, of course, Algayer noticed that. Knight f6, knight e2, bishop c5. By the way, speaking of the Terminator, this chess machine was called Automaton back then. That was the name. I mean, that's when these kinds of names started to be used. a3. Well, as we see, Napoleon plays rather doubtful. This move a3 is just a loss of tempo. d6, castling, bishop g4. White has to play queen d3. Knight h5. This is a strong move. Transfer to f4, h3. Bishop e2, queen e2, knight f4. Well, queen e1 is a decisive mistake. Of course, he should have moved it to g4. First, we attack g7. Second, we don't let this black queen to move to this square. But Napoleon played queen e1, got knight d4. Perhaps queen g5 was even faster to win. We just attack g2, and the problem is that we can't play g3 because queen takes g3. The pawn is pinned, and we can't take this queen. And here black just delivers mate, so white has to play g4. And here I guess you can see that this is a total disaster. We can play knight takes h3 and queen takes g4, or also something like h5, open the h file. So it's up to your heart, or knight d4, well it's a total smash. But the move knight d4 also leads to victory just like the automaton played. Knight takes h3. On gh, just knight f3 and white's down a queen. That's why Napoleon plays king h2, queen h4, g3, and more followed. What's threatening here? For example, how do we deliver mate if the pawn moves to c3? There's this good way to do this. Knight takes f2, king g1, knight f3 check, gf, and say, queen g3. Or even queen h1 because the knight is protected by the bishop on c5. That's why white has to play g3, and the queen drops. And then followed... This part is not interesting, so I'm fast-forwarding to see what happened next. I'm rewinding this whole Napoleon agony to the mate. I don't know what happened to the Turk next. Maybe Napoleon smashed him to splinters, but he was actually quite tolerant of the defeat, because he knew that Catherine the Great had lost to this machine before. So he was comforted by the fact that he was not the only one who failed. Now let's take a look at another game that Napoleon won. It's the game against Madame de Remesot. 
I'm not sure how to pronounce that right, but anyway, that was a woman he played with. The game was played in 1802, seven years before that game against the Mechanical Turk. Napoleon plays black, e4, knight f6, d3, knight c6. This is almost the Alekhine's defense. f4, e5, so this is the Vienna game. And knight g4, well that's gambling. Napoleon was hot-spirited, but of course the move is questionable. He should have played bishop b4, here, because after knight g4 and d4, things go really bad. Queen h4, g3, queen f6, and here white should have played bishop f4. The problem is that e5 knight hangs, and if we move it to g6, then white just takes the knight on g4. Black inevitably loses a piece in the end. But Madame played knight h3, and here I would like to make an important comment. Everyone knew that Napoleon hated to lose. Especially to lose to some girl, some woman. And it's not impossible that she gave in. Because she could have been sent into exile or something. Although Napoleon was such a modern and more sensible emperor than the others at the time, he was nevertheless pretty hot-spirited and could have reacted inappropriately. So perhaps she played to lose. Of course, if this game existed at all. There are rumors that this game was made up purely so that Napoleon would go down in history as a good chess player as well. So there are many legends surrounding it, but it's quite possible that this game was actually played. Knight e2, knight d4, king d3. And here the beauty begins. Knight e5, king d4. Well, on king d3, I think you can take your time here and play bishop c5. Then the knight will move to c2 or f3. Well, that all looks bad. So king d4, bishop c5, a sacrifice. Queen b6, and queen d6 mate. That's how Napoleon defeated this madame. There are a few other games that have survived to our time, but they're of absolutely no analytical value. Pure historical value. So we're not going to be looking at them today. If you want to, you can find them online. In this lesson, I just wanted to show you how Napoleon was involved in chess and tell a few stories. Other than that, you could see his level of play. As for the history, as you know, after Napoleon lost the war, St. Helena was chosen as the place of exile for him. But few people know that his accomplices and fans were preparing Napoleon's escape from the island, so they sent him a chessboard and in one of the pieces was hidden the escape plan. Namely, they put the plan of escaping from the island into the rook. Napoleon suspected that they might send him a clue, but he didn't open the rook. He opened the queen and king and put the chessboard away. He thought nothing had been sent to him, so he didn't take all the pieces apart. But if he had done that, he would have found that rook, found an escape plan, and probably escaped the island. And who knows, maybe he might have done some other notable things. But we'll never know, so we can only speculate. So friends, as you understand, chess is the game of kings because it develops strategic thinking, memory, and intellect. And perhaps because of that, Napoleon achieved such success in the field of war and conquered half the world because he had a strategic thinking. So play chess and be great.